Finding the perfect apartment is an exciting venture, but it can also be a bit overwhelming. The apartment rental process involves numerous decisions, from setting your budget to exploring different neighborhoods. In this video, we're here to be your apartment rental mentor. We'll guide you through the entire process, providing you with valuable insights and expert tips. Our goal is to empower you to approach apartment hunting with confidence and ease making sure you're well prepared for each step and equipped to secure the ideal apartment for your needs. Let's go. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name's Evan, I'm a real estate agent and mortgage broker here to answer all your questions. So buying an apartment, while the process sounds easy, you can have some difficulty if you don't take the process seriously. The first step is determining your needs and your budget. You need to go over your finances to understand how much you can afford each month to pay on rent. And you also need to determine how many bedrooms do I need? How many bathrooms do I need? Do I want it to be in an apartment or do I want it to be in a split house? How close do I want to be to work? These are all questions you need to determine now so that during the process, it's a lot smoother. Besides rent, you also need to consider the cost of utilities, parking, insurance, and more. If your overall costs become an issue, you should consider finding a roommate or two to spread them out. With a bigger budget, you might also have access to additional amenities you couldn't have afforded if it was just you on your own. If you need help creating a budget, I suggest watching my 50-30-20 video. I made it a little while ago and I've attached it in the description and on the side. After you've determined what your budget is and what you need, it's now time to look at listings. Looking at online rental sites like Realtor.com, Zillow, Facebook Marketplace, and Craigslist can give you a good understanding of what's available and if your budget is realistic. Other sources can be the newspaper, your friends, your family, and coworkers. You might also want to consider working with a realtor at this point. Now is here's the fun part, viewing the properties. If you're working with an agent, figure out a time and day where both of you are available and you can see the apartment. If you're not working with an agent, talk to the property manager or the listing agent and do the same thing. Once at the property, make sure to take notes and photos. You want to make sure that everything seems normal and that there's nothing funky or anything out of the ordinary. Some questions to consider asking are, what's included in the rent? How is maintenance and repairs handled? What is the neighborhood like? What is the policy on subletting? What is the parking situation? Are pets allowed, and if so, what is the policy? Note, if this is your first time in this process, take the time to look at more than just the first apartment. The first apartment might be amazing. You know, it might have everything that you think you need, but if you take the time to look at three, four, five, even six other apartments, you might see other apartments that offer more to you for the same price, or might have things that you never even considered, but you would have never seen had you gone with the first apartment. But note, don't take your sweet time. Taking your sweet time is delaying and procrastinating. And by that time, when you make your decision, the apartment's gone because apartments move quick. So take your time, but not your sweet time. Once you find an apartment that you really like, it's now time to submit an application. So the application process for all these different apartments are obviously different, but most times they ask you for basic information on yourself and basic financial information. Typically, they will need from you a photo ID, bank statements, pay stubs, tax returns and W-2s, a credit and background check, and the apartment application that came with the listing. To separate yourself from the other people applying, I suggest you have this information as early on in the process, probably from day one, right? Because like I said earlier, apartments move quick. They could be listed on Monday and sold on Wednesday. You have no idea. So getting that information now instead of, oh, I like this apartment, let me now get it, it sets you apart and it shows them, hey, I'm interested in this apartment, here's all my information, and you set the tone. Should your application be accepted, you will now receive a lease agreement. The lease agreement shows you how much you're paying each month, do I have rights to parking? You know, how much my utilities are gonna be costing, what the landlord can and can't do, what I can and can't do. But please read over the entire thing. This is not some app that you get on the app store that you just click, I agree. This document could cost you a lot of money if the landlord refers to something and you have no idea what he's talking about. 
if he says you can't bring friends over on Tuesday and you don't read that in the document and you bring friends over, you're breaking your lease, right? And you signed off on it. So please make sure that there's no funky things in the lease that you're signing up to and not randomly agreeing to with no idea. And while you're reading it, if there are any terms in the lease you'd like to discuss or negotiate, talk to the landlord and try to find a middle ground, you know? They're human, they'll, they'll listen, hopefully. Uh, but this could be like rental adjustments, you know, who has, uh, who has to do the maintenance responsibilities, you know, how late you can have friends over, and other, other things about the lease. After negotiations and clarifications, this is when you sign the lease agreement. And note, both you and the landlord should have a copy of the agreement. It's at this time that payment is usually required from you, the tenant. Typically, you'll need to pay the security deposit and the first month's rent before moving in. Uh, this payment can be paid by check, money order, and electronic transfer. In some cases, landlords will force the broker payment on you, the new tenant. And the broker payment is usually a month's rent split between the listing agent and the buyer's agent. So if you don't want to pay three months rent right off the bat, talk to the landlord early on in the process if it's just you and ask them if this is their policy uh, or talk to your real estate agent and tell them, hey, I don't want to pay three months rent. Just don't show me any listings that require the broker fee to be on the tenant. And this will save you a ton of time uh, and heartache should you find one and turns out you have to pay. And finally, moving in. Congratulations, you now have a place to call your own. Please coordinate with the landlord and property manager a time to move in all of your stuff. I would also suggest doing a move in inspection. This typically means taking photos of the apartment the day you move in and writing down pre-existing damages. Make sure to take photos and notes and save them in case your landlord tries to pin damages on you. You might even want to send the pictures and notes to your landlord so they have documentation as well. And yeah, that's basically it. As long as you respect your landlord, pay on time and respect the rules, you should have a fine time and smooth sailing for however long your lease is. By following the steps we just discussed in this video, you should have a good time, whether you're a first time renter or a seasoned renter. If you're educated and well informed about the process, your overall experience should be good. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you just saw, then click the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.